spooky. I'm recording this in the middle of a thunderstorm on a boat using my laptop. This is Zuma's revenge. The revenge of Zuma. They should have called this the Wrath of Zuma. This is Zuma 2. After all, the sequel to the excellent Zuma from PopCap. Zuma's Revenge is a terrific puzzle game, every bit as good as the original Zuma, and in many ways, even better. This one is available for download from PopCap's own website, and I'm playing this on my laptop. I like playing puzzle games on my laptop. It's like a giant Game Boy. This plays very well with the mouse. You move the cursor or the pointer around the screen, rotating your frog. Clicking the left button to fire, you can use the right button to switch ball colors. You can always see what the next color is going to be by looking in the, fr in the middle of the frog. After spending some time with the game, I think that Zuma's Revenge one-ups the original Zuma in terms of level design. The game shows some more creativity. There's some very clever tricks and power-ups going on in this one, and there's end boss battles. It's extremely well made. I reviewed the original Zuma on Xbox Live earlier in the year, and I have to admit I like this one better. Not that there's anything wrong with the original Zuma, it's a lot of fun, but this one is more refined. And this style of game is more suitable to be played with a mouse or stylus control than the, than the standard Xbox 360 or PlayStation style controller. You can move faster, it's more precise. It looks great on the PC as well. This is one of those games that's extremely easy to jump into and start playing, but very difficult to master to really excel at Zuma. You have to actually think one step ahead of yourself at all times, which is why glancing at the next ball is important. You're being scored in a variety of different ways. If you can successfully plan ahead to line up some combos and chains, as well as knocking down the colors extremely quickly, you can get a very wild score in Zuma. It starts off easy, but then gets much, much more difficult rapidly. It's like a fancy extension of what they would call match three gameplay in a way. You want to line up three of the same colors in a row to make them disappear. And then when they do disappear, the colors next to them sort of come together and you can make them go away as well, like a chain reaction. From time to time, you'll find some power-ups and you want to stop the flow of balls entering the screen by making the thing shout out Zuma. There's a bar on the top that needs to be filled initially before that happens, and then you want to just wipe them out, wipe them off the screen before they end up reaching the interior of the maze and causing you to lose a level. Hey, a shotgun! Let's watch some more gameplay because these puzzle games are always difficult to describe. They're all based upon the same principle, or, or at least these jewel matching games are based upon. The one basic principle, line up as many of the same colored jewels as possible to score big points and create chain reactions. Aha! Those things are tough to get. Note that the bananas caused the Zuma bar at the top to fill up a, a substantial amount. And that's one of the keys to a successful game. You want to fill up that bar as quickly as possible. The end boss battles in Zuma's Revenge are a lot of fun as well. We're going to watch one here where you have to eliminate some of the colors and shoot right through them in the split second that you're being scored. It sort of reminds me of Gorf for some reason. Rocket. 
Zuma's Revenge, another excellent game from PopCap. <laughs>